Hey folks, Steve Lewis here. Welcome to Relevance for today. We're going to be digging into the Word today. We're going to be digging in Colossians as well as in Hebrews. Some very important information for you. Something to dig out of the toolbox, out of the Word of God. That's going to help you and I step up to the plate and be more Christ-like in this day and age. In 2020, new season, new vision. Let's get to it. Stay tuned. Okay, folks, we are back. For those who haven't seen it yet, da 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 da. I got the Superman shirt on, got the Relevance for Today t shirt, love the microphone, had to get that hooked up, just like on the picture back here. Exciting times. I'm looking forward to digging in, getting into the word, sharing the word with you. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to dig right in. So, today, we are going to be digging into Colossians and some important scripture. Starting off the year 2020, I figured it would be a great idea to dig into some more tools and equipment, some more things to equip us mentally, physically, spiritually, so that we can get into the Word and then get out here and be a light. It's time to put the boots to the ground, folks. Boots to the ground. I know you guys have seen my favorite cup where it says Jesus Coffee Bacon Naps. I don't know if you can see that too good or not, but the naps instead of that, it should be Jesus Coffee Bacon Step Out. Step out, it's time. Okay, so in order to step out, we need to prepare our minds. We need to prepare our spirit man. Because remember, we feed our body food, right? We're body, soul, and spirit. Our soul, to make our soul happy, we do all kinds of wonderful things. We go on vacations, we drive great cars, we go on road trips, we play video games, we watch movies and things like that. But for our spirit man, our spirit man is starving because we don't feed it. And we need to feed our spirit man the Word of God. We need to dig into the Word. I'm telling you folks, it's educational, it's going to help us a lot. We need to get into the Word. I'm going to be encouraging you all to do that as I do the same thing. Remember, when I share and suggest things with you folks, I'm also suggesting it with me. And I'm not just suggesting it with me, I'm telling me, Steve Lewis, to step up to the plate. So, let's dig in. So, we are going to be in Colossians. I've got the New Living Translation. As always, folks, you know I try to encourage you by telling you what Bibles I'm using. This one's the Tyndale Slimline New Living Translation with the words of Jesus in red. And I've beat this thing up pretty bad, but you know what? That's okay. It's a great Bible to have. Very slim. The font size is great. So that's the Slimline Tyndale New Living Translation. Going to be reading Colossians 3. Chapter 3, 1 through 11. Very important. And remember, this is for all of us. It's not me saying I'm pointing my finger at you. This is me saying, yeah, learn it, Stephen Lewis, and then share it. So here we go. This entitled, Living the New Life. So since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand powerful. And you know, some folks may ask me, Steve, why do you wear the crucifix? Uh, back when I went to the school of ministry at uh, Apostolic Training Ministries, my wife bought me this because of the new season I was stepping into. And for me, it reminds me of what Jesus did for me. You know, he's not on the cross anymore. He is seated with the Father in heaven. But when I see this cross and I see him hanging on that, it's to remind me of what he did for me and for me to live my life right according to his commands, according to his word. So, remember, he is at his right hand, seated with the Father. So think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. Oh, my word. We ask Jesus Christ into our life. Our lives are hidden with Christ bonded together together as one when you ask jesus christ into your life you have the holy spirit within you you're one togetherness you can't just take your arm and pull it off or your leg or you can't pull your heart out of your chest and just throw it on the ground you're intertwined together god intertwined us together our insides all of it 
the spirit is within that, intertwined within. Oh, man, that sounds good. So, and when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So put to death, and this is for all of us, including me, this is for all of us, put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still a part of this world. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on, put on the new nature, the new nature, and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Put them on. Think of yourself. You have a cold day. It's cold here. It's minus 11 this morning. But you have a cold day. I was just looking to see if my blanket was close. You take that blanket and you wrap that around yourself. And when you wrap that around yourself, just like when you wrap God's word, when you wrap the relationship you have with the Lord around you, it also covers you it covers everything. It covers the old me. It covers everything. And the way that's worded, I mean, it just sounds so awesome. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. You ever have those days where you slacked off and didn't drink enough water and then you finally drink water and I always call it rib running. It's a picture of water going into your throat, running down your ribs like a waterfall. And I know it's not true, it's not running down my ribs, but that's just a perfect example. I just think of it that way, rib running. Just running down your ribs, That, and you just feel that coolness and that refreshing. Ah, oh, amazing. So picture that. Whew. It's a good feeling, you know, when you think about the Holy Spirit, the Lord. Ah, oh, fresh, renewed, new day, new life. Man, none of us are perfect. You know, we all have paths. But you know you can get up each day. Start a fresh day anew. Start that new day with the Lord. Praise God. So, in this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free, Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. Once again, when you ask Jesus Christ into your life as your Savior and Lord, now the Holy Spirit has been deposited in you. You have God's DNA through your DNA, mixed in with your DNA. He created us. It's a powerful thing. It's coming back to the fold. Exciting stuff. So, in this portion of scripture, I did mention about sin. And I'll read some of that again because it's very important. Because every day the enemy is trying so hard to take us out. He does not want to go to hell alone. Hell is real. Heaven is real. He does not want us to go to be with the Lord for eternity. So instead, he wants to do whatever he can to trip us up. And as you can see, there's trip holes everywhere. If we don't stay focused and we don't die to ourselves, like Paul says, every day we have to get up determined. Today's another day. Today's a new battle. Today I'm going to make sure I don't get tempted. Today I'm going to stay focused on you, Lord. We have to stay focused. So I'm going to read that little bit real quick once again. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater. Worshipping the things of this world, whether it's money, whether it's stuff. You know, I've got to have another car. I've got to have this. I've got to have that. And you're so focused on your stuff that you don't focus on the Lord at all. And why would you focus on the Lord? Because you know what? I have everything I need, so I'm not worried about it. 
you know so that's the way people are and before you know it these items these things become your gods and that's how you end up in idolatry idols you start worshiping idols you might not get down on your hands and knees and worship it, but I'll tell you what, when you're sitting back saying, I've got to have that money, I'm focused more on money, I'm focused more on stuff, I'm focused more on this and that, and less on the Lord, and the Lord's word gets pushed further and further and further away till it's way in the background and you lose sight of it, that's when idolatry sets in. So keep that in mind, folks. Don't have any other idols. Remember, it's in the Ten Commandments. So... You used to do these things. What a great reminder. We used to do these things, but now. We used to do them, but now is the time to get rid of it. Get rid of the anger. Get rid of the maliciousness. All those things. The behaviors, the slander, and dirty language. Remember, people are watching us. If you are living to be Christ-like, if your focus is to be Christ-like, then you need to be like Christ. You need to remember, as I've said before, the world is watching you. They're watching you. They're taking notes. And my daughter and I had a conversation this morning, and one of the things that she brought up, and it was the truth, she said, you know, that's why people don't want to be bothered with Jesus, or people don't want to be bothered with going to churches or Christians, because of the way some act. And all it takes is one. You know how it is. One could act up, and that's the one that everybody sees and refers to. They don't refer to all the other ones out there that are being Christ-like and they're living for the Lord and they're doing what needs to be done in their communities and in the world. They focus on the one knucklehead who's acting up and they say, ah, I've got an excuse now. It's that Christian, that so-called Christian person supposed to be Christ-like and they're cursing and swearing and they're treating people like garbage and they hate people. That's the one that I'm going to use as my excuse so I don't have to go know Jesus Christ. And that's too bad because at the end of the day, it's not good. The ending is not good. So keep that in mind. So now we go on from this passage of scripture. I want to go on to Hebrews 4, 12 through 13, because I want to share something with you that's very important. It's going to be, so how do we get from that to the next step? So, I'm going to read this out of the Everyman's Bible. It's also the New Living Translation. Great Bible. Bought it on sale. Uh, I love it. Great deal. Handy. Wives, if your man doesn't have a Bible, get him the Everyman's Bible. Everyman's Bible. Another Tyndale Bible. It's got great topics in there. It even has in here on how to be a better husband. Wives, go buy it for your man. Just saying. Okay, so we are in Hebrews 4, 12 through 13. Okay, so this is important because this backs up why we need to dig into the Word of God. For the Word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. That list I just read to you. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before His eyes. And He is the one to whom we are accountable. So we're accountable to Him. It's written in His Word. We stay focused. You read this book. You get it in here. Like I said before, feed your soul, man. Get into the Word daily. Take your time. We can sit back and we can play Xbox. We can sit back and scroll on Facebook. My gosh, we can get on Pinterest for hours if we're not careful. But yet we can't even open up the Word of God and read it for less than a minute. We need to take the time out for this, folks. I had a saying in a Bible study that I taught, and I said, you know, if you took five minutes a day to read God's Word, that's like going downstairs, going to make yourself some toast, finding out that there's no soft butter, putting the butter in the microwave, softening it up, the toast pops out, you spread it, you get your cup of coffee, you sit down, and that right there is five minutes of your time, of your day. All Think about all the things that we do during the day, and and then think, why couldn't I take the time out to read God's Word? And remember, it's powerful, it's important. So, the last thing I want to share is going to be Paul's prayer for spiritual growth. And I want to encourage you to read this for yourself, and I want to encourage you to take this prayer that Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. 
and I want you to use it for your life. Okay, so think about yourself as I'm reading this. Once again, Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees. I pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through, the, through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Powerful passage of scripture. And of course the church, it's not the building. The church is the people. And we have to remember that. There's no such thing as a church building. They're places of worship, houses of worship. We are the church. You can't call yourself a building. You know what I mean, folks? You ask Jesus Christ into your life. Now you're part of the body of Christ. Now you are the church, the people who go out into the world and share the love of Jesus Christ. And in order to do that, we have to once again focus on him, focus on his word. You know what, folks? Make sure you take yourselves, get a notepad, dig it out. Watch this video over again. There's plenty more to come. In fact, I'll probably do another one that wraps up the other portion of Colossians 3. And uh, just dig in. Dig in. Get into it. There's all types, you know, New King James, whichever Bible you prefer. Remember, there's large print Bibles out there. Okay? And folks, if you don't have a Bible, put a comment. Leave a message or something, because what I'll have to do, if you're not local, what I will make sure I do is check into where you're from and see what local organizations and ministries are out there that actually give out Bibles, because we've got to get these into your hands, that way you can actually have it to actually read it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and pray. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this opportunity today, just to share your word Heavenly Father, I thank you for the words that you gave me to speak today, Lord. I thank you for the words that Paul wrote, all the powerful words that he wrote that we can still apply to our lives today. We can learn from the writings of the God-blessed men and women that wrote in this book. We thank you for your word. Heavenly Father, I pray for all those out there who are hurting, who are suffering, who are going through all those different things that I read about in Colossians. Heavenly Father, to give everybody the strength that each day they wake up, they will be able to grab the Word of God and to be strengthened in knowing who they are and to be thankful for who they are. Lord, bless them, protect them, and keep them safe. Heavenly Father, there's so many things going on around the world right now. Lord, we pray for the folks in China with the virus going around. We pray for the folks who are dealing with tsunamis, the folks who are dealing with loss of loved ones. I mean, all the loss of loved ones. You know, from the helicopter crash that killed several people, including Kobe Bryant, to all the military people who are out there serving each day who are dying that no one hears about, to the police officers, to the firefighters, to the first responders, all those out there who are giving of themselves and dying, and no one knows about it. To those people, Lord, we pray for their families as well, especially those who are in harm's way. Blessings on each and every individual out there listening to the sound of my voice and watching this video. Blessings on all of them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. There you have it, folks. Another episode, Relevance for Today. We're going to be coming up on 100 episodes here in probably another month or so. Pretty excited about that. And I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I might do something like do a Bible giveaway where we'll get some people's names written on a Bible and uh, bless them that way. Probably be a New Living Translation since that's my favorite translation. But get into the Word, folks. I encourage you to share this with your friends. Leave us a comment. Love to hear from you. With that being said, God bless you all. 
Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. Love ya. Peace.